Bill Platt, here with Dr. Walter Block, of course, professor of economics at Loyola University in New Orleans, uh, but he really doesn't need an introduction. He has been in the libertarian movement and a prominent thinker in that movement for quite a while, and it's just, I mean, it's such a pleasure to talk to you, Walter. Thank you so much for coming on. You're very kind to have me. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about legalized blackmail. Uh, this is your new book. This is super interesting. Um, I have not been able to get a hold of it yet, but uh, you, you know, you wrote a little bit about blackmail and defending the undefendable, and yes. it kind of brings up the uh, the non-aggression principle. You know, a lot of people consider blackmail aggression, but you say, uh, what exactly is blackmail? This is from the text from uh, defending the undefendable. You say blackmail is the offer of a trade. It's the offer to trade something, usually silence, for some other good, usually money. If the offer of the trade is accepted, the blackmailer then maintains his silence, and the blackmailed paid the agreed-upon price. So, why isn't this aggression? Well, first I have to flash my book at you. This is legal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not trying to sell these books, although if you want to buy them, that's fine. Uh, they're available at the Mises Institute store and also on Amazon.com. But most of the essays, if you just Google me and... Uh, Walter Block, Blackmail, you'll get most of the articles here. They're, they've all been published elsewhere, and this is a compilation. Uh, it's 20 bucks, so if you want them all together. And by the way, I refuse to sign electronic copies of what I've written, but I will sign this book if you buy the book, so that's an incentive for that. All right. Uh, uh, the... Uh, why? Yes, a lot of people think of blackmail as aggression, but it's really not because they're confusing it with extortion. You see, in both extortion and in blackmail, what you're doing is you're making a threat and you're demanding money or sexual services or you know whatever it is you're demanding, usually money. But the threat is very different and there's nothing wrong with a threat. Like, suppose I threaten you that unless you uh, take off that horrible shirt you're wearing, the one with the checkerboard thing. Oh, um, no. Um, <laughs> that's an anti-libertarian shirt, but no, I'm kidding. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, as Ayn Rand would say, you could see all the venom and hatred in every stitch of that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being silly. It's a funny shirt. Don't take it off. But suppose I threaten you that unless you take that shirt off and burn it, I won't be your best friend forever. Well, have I violated your rights? No, you have no uh, right to be my best friend forever. And, and I can make that threat. Or uh, when I bought my shirt, and this is a crappy gray shirt, when I bought my crappy gray shirt, I made a threat to the owner of the shirt, the previous owner of the shirt. And I said, unless you give me the shirt, I'm not going to pay you. And he also made a threat to me that unless you give me the money, I'm not going to give you the shirt. Huh. So every, every uh, uh, how shall I say it, uh, commercial interaction is a mutual threat. If you don't give me what you're supposed to give me, I'm not going to give you what I'm supposed to give you. So there's nothing wrong with a threat per se. It all depends upon what the threat is about. And if the threat is to use violence against an innocent person, that's extortion. So if I say, uh, unless you give me money, I'm going to blow your head off. Well, that's extortion. Huh. Okay. No, that's other, a really important distinction. Yeah. On the other hand, if I, if I say, unless you give me money, I'm going to badmouth your shirt. <laughs> well, I have a right to badmouth your shirt, right? So that threat would be legitimate. Or I could say, and is in the case of blackmail, but by the way, that's a case of blackmail too. But another case of blackmail here, information, uh, is unless you give me money, I'm going to tell everyone that you uh, take a bath with a rubber ducky. And uh, this is very bad and no one will hire you and all your friends will leave you and stuff like that. Sure. Yeah. Well, what, what if, uh, and I know that this is kind of difficult to gauge, but what if the information is, is very damaging? Well, you take a bath with rubber ducky, that's very damaging. <laughs> <laughs> because who's going to want to play with you if you take a bath with a rubber ducky? Or you're married and you're having an affair with somebody you're not supposed to be having an affair with, or you're cheating, or you're doing something very damaging. Well, uh, look, every trade is mutually beneficial. When I bought this shirt for 10 bucks, I valued the shirt at more than 10 bucks. Otherwise, I wouldn't have bought it. And I made profit. Let's say I valued it at 15. So I made a $5 profit. I valued it at 15 and I only paid 10. The guy who sold me the shirt probably valued it at 5 cents because he had so many, wanted to get rid of them. He sold it me for 10. He made a profit of 9.95 ex ante. Every um, 
commercial interaction is mutually beneficial in this sense. So is blackmail. Look, let's say uh, you have this deep, dark, dirty secret that you uh, take a bath with the rubber ducky. And uh, I found out about it somehow, and you don't want it to get out. And I say, okay, pay me 100 a month for the rest of your life, and I'll keep quiet. You, If you agree, uh, you say, it must be because you value my silence more than 100 a month, and it must be that I value the money more than the pleasure of blabbing about you. Uh, gossiping about you in this way. So again, it's mutually beneficial. Sure, sure. And speaking of gossip, you say that gossip is not mutually beneficial. It's very similar to blackmail, but blackmail is better because, once again, uh, reading from the text, uh, the sole difference between gossip and a blackmailer is that the blackmailer will refrain from speaking for a price. Uh, the, the gossip will not. So in many ways, blackmail is more like a contract uh, than gossip, which is just spreading rumors about people. Right. I mean, if you're in the hands of a gossip, it's game over. <laughs> Case closed. You're a toast. If you're in the hands of a black man, at least he has the decency, and I use the word decency. <laughs> he has the decency to say, look, I'll make a deal with you. I'll shut up if you give me money. And then if, if the money that he asks for is too much, you can say, well, publish or, uh, or, and be damned, which is a famous quote from, uh, from the literature. You know, I'm not paying, you know, you're free to go gossip. But the point is we never put gossips in jail. Yeah. So, why, so why should we put people who blackmail in jail when uh, we don't put gossips in jail and blackmail is just the threat to become a gossip? I, that's, I think that's a really good point. Uh, lastly, though, uh, what about legalizing blackmail as a deterrent to blackmail? I'm not sure if I quite understand your argument for this. Why do you think that if we legalize blackmail, there will be less blackmail? No, I, I think if we legalize blackmail, we'll have more blackmail. Oh, okay. I don't think I, if I ever said that it was a typographical error or a mistake, and I would uh, retract that. Uh, my view as an economist uh, that I get from Gary Becker is that the uh, higher the penalty for uh, – for murder or theft, the less you'll have of it. Namely, the demand curve slopes downward for uh, for anything. Okay. For, okay. For sure. So whatever. So if you legalize blackmail, you should have more of it. Other things equal. It might not. Or you can't have less of it. You'd at least have uh, uh, no less, and maybe more, and probably more if you legalize it. Whereas right now, if you blackmail someone, you can go to jail for it. So uh, and therefore, people would say, "Well, hey, maybe I'd better not blackmail." Because and the case you gave in what was it, Ohio or somewhere, uh, of somebody, some politician writing in. Oh, Oklahoma, uh, yeah, Oklahoma. Sorry. Um, so I think you would have more blackmail uh, if you legalize blackmail. And one of the points I made in in defending the undefendable and also in in this here book uh, was that uh, this would have some salutary effect that. Uh, criminal gangs uh, would now be harder to form because they would realize that they could each blackmail each other after the fact. So instead of having specialization and division of labor in gangs, they'd each have to be on their own or more likely to be on their own. They'd be less efficient uh, and they'd be less efficient crime and, and less crime. Uh, so that would be a, a pragmatic or utilitarian reason for legalizing blackmail. But I don't think I ever said that... Um, if you legalize blackmail, you'll have less. I, my view is if you legalize it, you'll have more. If you legalize anything, you'll have more of it. If you legalize pot, you'll have more pot than, than if you don't legalize it. Sure. No, that, I mean, I think that makes perfect sense. Well, uh, Walter Block, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Uh, it's been just a pleasure to speak with you again, and I look forward to doing it in the future. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Well, you're very kind, and I enjoyed it too, and I'd be happy to be back on your show whenever. Take care. All right, and you as well. Thank you.